Good morning, everyone. We're continuing here in the Hilchis Kashrus of Rabbi Yom Forst. And we're speaking about the prohibition of Basav Echol, of milk and meat. Not only eating them together, but we said yesterday, even having them on the same table together, lest a person make a big mistake, and while he's eating his hot dog, he reaches over and he grabs a piece of pizza as well. And now we're going to speak about the ever so famous Shailah, the halachic question, which is, how long does a person need to wait between eating meat and then having a meal of dairy or even a cup of coffee with some milk inside of it? Says the, he writes, Eating milk eggs, eating dairy products after you ate meat already. Now keep in mind over here that as we go through this, we're going to just give the background information and then we will discuss what is the halacha lemaisa, what is the proper way in which a person should go about keeping this halacha. Not only is there a prohibition of eating meat and milk together at once, Chazal came along and they said not only that, but also you should not eat dairy products immediately after you eat basar, after you eat meat. Like it says in the Gemara in Chulim, once that a person eats meat, he's not allowed to eat cheese. Pershusham the Gemara, and the Gemara explains over there what does that mean? Ki Mar Ukva, like Mar Ukva, who was one of the great sages. Kasha Achal Basar Suudas Besudazu, when he would eat meat in this meal, Layachal Gavinat Suuda Acheres, he would not eat Gavina cheese or dairy products until the next meal. So Vihine Nechluku are Rishainim Befeir Shira Suuda Acheres. So the Rishainim, who are the explainers of the Gemara, they have a difference of opinion of what does it mean the next meal that the Gemara is speaking about. What is the time frame between one meal and the next meal? And they also have a dispute of what is the reason why we have to wait between eating meat and having milk later on. Kamashi is like we are going to explain. So keep in mind, we're explaining piece by piece the way that this halach is going to work. Yesh Mefarshim, there are those who explain, this is the Rambam and others, Ki Se'uda Acheres, when it says that you have to wait between one meal and the next meal, Hainushi Azman Shebein Suda Lesuda, it's the time frame between one meal and the next. Klaimar, what does that mean? Ha'oichal Basar Lo'yoichal Ma'ichali Cholav, At Shiyavar Meshech Azman Aragil, a person who eats meat is not allowed to eat Ma'ichali Cholav, dairy products, until the appropriate amount of time has passed, which was normal, in the days of our sages, between lunch and dinner. And that is a full six hours. So apparently, in the days of Chazal, of our sages, we're talking about 1800 years ago and beyond, when they would eat a meal, they would eat lunch at a certain time, let's say at noon, and they would not eat dinner until 6 p.m. at night. There were six hours in between. One of the reasons apparently that they were waiting between lunch and dinner for six hours was because they wanted to make sure that the meat and the milk did not cross paths. Yesh HaChalkim, there are those who argue, Umefarshim, and they explain, Ki Se'uda Acheres, what does it mean you wait from one meal to the next? Peirusho She'asolecha Basa V'chala B'Seich Se'uda Achaz Mamesh. It means you cannot eat meat and milk at the same meal itself. However, if you finished eating your pastrami sandwich, you would be allowed then to eat a piece of cheesecake for dessert immediately. Don't rush to any conclusions yet. According to them, However, you have to conclude the first meal, and therefore if you washed and had bread, you'd have to say the benching afterwards. If you didn't eat bread, you just sat down for, let's say, a bowl of spaghetti and meatballs or, or a piece of chicken. Then you at least have to make the, the after bracha on the meat that you have just eaten. Because once that you make an after bracha, that's considered to be the end of that meal. 
And therefore, when you're starting to eat another meal, that's, that's the new meal. Furthermore, you have to rinse out your mouth after you eat the meat. And to even rinse it out with liquids, you have to eat a little piece of food that's going to help clean out the mouth from the meat. And you also have to rinse it out with some liquid as well to make sure that there is no meat that is still inside of you. Kasva Paiskim and the Halachic authorities write, Shafilu the Shita Zu, even according to this opinion, the Khaloifin Yesh Lahamtin Shaachas Bena Khila Basar, Khilas Basar the Khalaf. Nevertheless, you can't just go eat your pastrami sandwich and then bench afterwards and then have a piece of cheesecake. Rather, even according to this opinion, there needs to be an Hamtana, a waiting period of one hour in between the meat and the dairy. Now, we're just beginning to get started over here. There's more for us to see, to understand how exactly we're going to work our own hanhaga, our own practice in the world of waiting between milk and meat and milk. How many hours does a person have to wait and what do they have to do to ensure that there's no longer meat that's inside of them? Okay, to be continued, have a wonderful Shabbos.